first meeting of 2020, January Point 7th. of order, I think Kathy called the meeting okay. order. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you ready to have that. <laughs> we'll call this meeting to order. Uh, we'll be January 7th, 2020. Commissioner Feldhardt, would you like to lead us in the pledge? Sure. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you guys would like to remain standing, we're going to bless the county with a prayer. We have Pastor Timothy Dow from Prince of Peace Lutheran up in Hecklock. When Solomon was given a public position of responsibility, God commended him for asking not for riches and honor, but an understanding heart. Now, no one's becoming rich being county commissioner, but it's that honor part that's more difficult because not everything you decide is all that popular. But your strength to choose the right thing comes from seeing that God sent his son not to be popular, to do anything very pretty to the eye on the cross, but the right thing, giving us through the forgiveness of sins eternal life. And so we pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, give these men and women an understanding heart to do what is best to maintain peace and order in our society and to give us the freedom to gather freely and safely to celebrate the name of your Son. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have nominations for our new county commission chair. I'd like to nominate Mike Wheat. Motion dies for lack of second. I nominate Rachel Kipway. Second. nomination cease and the unanimous ballot be cast. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. All right, Rachel is our 2020 commission chair. Commissioner Tripoli. I got a few hairs left to go gray, so thank you guys. Yeah. I nominate uh, Doug Feldheim for vice chair. Second. nomination piece and an M. Should I do the ballot cab unanimously? All right, all those in favor of uh, Commissioner Feldheim as Vice Chair? Aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, congratulations. You are now Vice Chair. Thank you. We need to move later. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Um, we got like one minute to go. Should we go ahead and do the minutes or something? I'm um, sure. We can do the minutes. December 31st, 2019. Oh, second. We got corrections or additions to those minutes. Everyone gets a chance to read them. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have claims and payroll. So move. Aye. We got a motion. Second from Sutton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. <coughs> HR report. Move. Second. By Second by Spiker. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. That brings us up to 850, which we have Scott Mice, the emergency <laughs> manager on the Mine Lake Dam. Scott, are you with us? I am. How are you this morning? Good morning. Good morning. Happy right. New Year. <coughs> Happy New Year. I uh, want well, ask Julie Johnson to come and join me here. Good morning, Julie. Um, Good morning. I think most of you all know Julie. You. And I'm going to let Julie do the talking. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm humbled to be in your emergency manager's uh, presence as well as in yours. My name is Julie Johnson, for those of you who don't know me as well. Um, I happen to live at Minor Lake and I typically do the legislative session. So this year again we're going to do that. Mina Lake has decided that it will have a presence at the legislature from a lobbying perspective to look out for whatever may happen in and around Mina Lake Dam. We don't have a lot of answers. Uh, your emergency manager has provided as many answers as there may be. There's a chunk missing <laughs> from the Mina Lake Dam. We want to be sure that it doesn't uh, deteriorate any further. We need to know what's going to happen financially, if anything is going to be repaired, when they can be repaired, etc. Some of you served in the legislature and know the process there. It's difficult to find money for dams and you've been down that path with both Elm Lake and Richmond Lake in recent years. Uh, so we wanted you to know that we're going to be there um, looking out for that kind of thing um, and in that process we wanted to be sure we weren't um, going uh, sideways with Brown County because uh, Minor Lake dumps into Brown County if, if that dam fails. Uh, clearly Edmonds County has a stake in it as well. We visited with their commission just the other day. Uh, they will be writing a support letter in favor of whatever needs to be done with that dam. And I uh, just wanted you to know that we're having these conversations and didn't want to get sideways with you, at least at the legislative process. We may, yes, there may be some coalition stuff we need to do. We may need to invoke you um, and your influence in the legislative process. We don't know. It's way too early to know. Um, but if there is an option there, we're going to try to look out for that. Um, it would be a real disaster for a lot of people if that dam fails and does not receive the kind of attention that it may need. So that's the reason I went to talk to Scott the other day and at the end of that conversation we thought we may should have this conversation with you as well. As I mentioned, we had this conversation at Edmonds County Commission just the other day as well. They'll be so writing a support line. Is uh, <coughs> Mina Dam, is that under school and public land? It's under Game Fish and Marsh. Because they're both ways there. Yeah, so it's more mm -hmm. complex. Yeah. And I'll just give you a little update, and, and, and the reason I asked Julie is because she had, she's got the, the know behind some of this, but, uh, and, and I thank Julie for reaching out to us because, as she said, this does impact Brown County, although the dam is in Edmonds County, if that thing would, would uh, catastrophically fail for some reason, the repercussions are in our county. Um, in conversations that I've had with Game Fish and Parks, um, I reached out to them uh, soon after Julie and I met in mid-December and they, they have a partial game plan. Um, They're going to do some inspections yet with an engineering firm out of Sioux Falls, I believe it is, to uh, assess the, the so-called damage that happened last spring. Um, they promised me there's going to be temporary repairs done yet this winter before the water starts flowing this spring. Um, and then they will put together a game plan for a permanent fix, you know, next year or something like that. Um, that that's what I know. Um, yeah. Well, it does flow into Brown County even when it's functioning and designed. So right. it's definitely right. something that you know we have common interests in. It just so happens that uh, the footprint of it's in Edmonds County, but it's definitely something we have concern with as well. So right. So Julie and I are here today to ask for, I guess, support from the commission to, to help Julie and her venture and peer if, if need be, um, and again to help protect the citizens that, that, that we provide services to um, and, and move forward with this if we can. Sure. Do you, do you feel it's an appropriate time to draft a letter just as Edmonds County has done and show it to us and maybe we sign on to that? Or is it too we premature? Can, we can try that. No, I don't think it's premature. Okay. We may be able to substitute something more um, educated once we get there and, and learn a little more about what the engineers find out and that kind of thing. So you may find something that is more artful in the next several weeks after that. But um, it would be—I think it would be helpful. Uh, it, this will have to be a coalition, and of course the state is suffering from other dams that burst as well. Uh, one near Alexandria completely blew out and that has residents around it. Um, Hiddenwood, 
although I don't believe there's any plan to replace the Hidden Wood Dam. There's one down by Winter, one by Phillip, and possibly more. So um, this may be a bigger issue than Edmonds and Round County at the end of the day, um, but we're hoping that there's some some clear path at the end of the legislative session. Uh, if, if those dams that you mentioned, I wonder how many of those, or if any of them, are under game fishing parks, or if they're uh, school and public land. That make, might make a difference too as right. to requests and how serious, you know, which side, if it's on school and public lands or if it's on game fishing parks. Well, those two different departments, but we have had some success with a coalition of interested parties. I have no idea what uh, game like. fishing parks um, funding or money would be available for, whereas school and public lands, basically they go right to appropriations and ask for a special appropriation. So, and I don't know if Game Fish and Parks is in that, I would imagine, will be in that same situation, probably. That, that would be my guess, that uh, if this is a, a major repair or replacement, that it's going to have to go to appropriations for special. And how that's handled is different. I've watched both issues mm -hmm. in the last several <coughs> years of the legislature, usually in better hands if it's a school and public land dam. But it's pretty well documented. There's issues with the toe of that dam. And yeah. Clearly, even from a layman's standpoint, or yeah. on top of the attention. Yeah. Good. We're happy to have you uh, spearheading and <laughs> <We're heading laughs> leading, <home>. leading, <laughs> <Listening> <laughs> <a lot. laughs> leading the Showing conversation. Yep. Uh, any other questions for Julie Chet? Yeah, if you want to draft something for us, we'll okay. pick it up next week and right, so we can get a okay. signature on that. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Oh. Next on the agenda, Dirk Rogers, the Highway Superintendent, right away in Frederick. Set bid dates for equipment, rentals for gravel materials, road oils, and hot mix. Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year. Not bad. Good. Not bad. And you guys? Good. 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 We're here. Why don't you put the stock trailer in your private parking spot over there? <laughs> well, that looks like a nice spot to put it. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do we got up there first? Right away for the city of Frederick. You know, they got that uh, sanitary sewer general project they're doing. And I didn't realize this, but two locations, it's on 2nd and 3rd Street, Frederick Map in here. Uh, I saw that. Shows the 10A oh. on that. <laughs> right on the top there, and that left is right at the top of Frederick. Doesn't yeah. show that. It's pretty small here, but there's two. Oh, it's, it's not the one that goes by the school, but these next two, you can't see them really well. But the, actually, there's sewer line. There's two residences. There's one up here, and then there's one kind of more on this this section line, and there's two runs of that project. I have the plans there if you want to see them, but they just run under Road 5. I didn't even realize that that was uh, platted up there, but um, so there's two locations. They're going to have to go under the county road. They're going to bore them, so that's that's good. It'll be more bored and jacketed because it's a sanitary sewer you put another pipe around <coughs> so go under the road there. So. Uh, Helms Engineering is the engineer in the city of Frederick is actually the uh, applicant. There's not a contractor in here yet because they're going to do this sometime this next season and they just want to get the, the uh, occupancy permit going. So I don't have any problems with it. So okay, motion from Weed. Second. Second from Sutton. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Close nay. Motion carried. They did two of them, one for each cross on that. So it's the, it's the same thing. So I'm not going to go into that. That was easy. And then we're going to set some bid dates. Yeah, whatever the, as soon as we can get paper Paul to get it in the paper over in Groton, I don't want, I want to do it. So whatever the quickest we can do it, we want to set the bid dates and time for equipment rentals, gravel materials, road well, oil. Well, we said it today. We'll publish the 15th, the 22nd, so we can have a hearing on the 28th. January 28th, all right? Yep, so the 28th is when we would open them. Okay. Yeah. And it's, uh, what's the date? Yeah, it's the 28th. Yeah, it's the 28th. Okay. Yeah, it's the 28th. 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 Yeah, it's the 
Okay. Open them and acknowledge them. Yeah, pretty much. Move. Motion from Weiss. Second. Second from Fiker. Any discussion on the January 28th opening date? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Anything else? That's it. That's it. I actually forgot we get a real I put in your mailbox. Yeah, I saw it. Uh, we didn't get the grant for the for the road project there. We'll have to see when they get done with the sewer project up at Frederick. Um, you know, we had indicated well, it needs to be paved. It actually would have been worked into the. And that's um, on five itself, is it? No, that, that's this is on Main Street. On Main Street, yeah. Okay. Um, it's basically a mile. It'd be like 120 thousand bucks up there. There is. Uh, the, there's a DOT project on 281, and I haven't heard the absolute final on where the hot plant's going to sit, but there will be a hot plant up there associated with that project, so it would be a good year to, to get the Main Street done. We save quite a little in trucking, so uh, hopefully we can get that worked in there, but it's just basically paving a mile, uh, you know, like in those couple little towns, we're responsible for the middle 24 feet, so we'll just pave that and should be good. Good. All right. Questions? One other one other thing, uh, the signs on the Wise Metal Grade got blew down or taken out. Okay. Has anybody reported it to you? Or we're I we're had, working up there today. Yeah, I had gotten a text from somebody that lives up there, and they said the signs are missing on the Wise Metal Grade. Okay. Um, that was uh, we actually ended up we started pulling the ice off of that. More more kind of a request from Sand Lake. Um, to get that open again because a lot of folks are cutting up through the refuge. You know, that, that was an area that was underwater, then it froze, and then some of the water drained away, but the ice is like still sitting up here and the road's down here. So we been, we started going through there, pulling that ice off of there, and then eventually we'll get some gravel and stuff up in there. Well, then, uh, then we had a foot of snow and that just sort of filled everything back in again, so uh, and I got to be careful here. We m and we were going to go up there today. I'm not certain. I'd have to verify. But if not, in the next day or two, we're going to go back and we'll be cutting that ice off of there with the intent of getting the road open, or at least passable, and then we'll have to see what happens. It'll be open for a few months until the big flood comes in about three, four months. So, so. all right, everybody good? Get that. All right. Thank have you. Good there. You got here. Yeah. All right, that brings us to the end of the regular agenda. We'll go through the remainder of Kathy's items in the bullet points. You have quite a bit today. Yeah. <laughs> we have the TMS contract. Move. Motion from Sutton. Second. Second from Fikert. Any questions on that contract? So this is the final, it looks like, yes. year of five years. No. And we'll be paying 26000 for the staging, lighting, everything at the fair. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. 2020 salary schedule. Move. Second. Motion from Feldheim. Second from Sutton. Questions on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Holiday schedule adjustment. Did you guys see Erica's um, yeah. notes about her options or recommendations? So last year, did we get two or three? Forget. Bonus days. Better three. We got to look at the calendar and see what we're going to do this year. Um, our HR director recommended um, April 10th, Good Friday, either a half day or whole day. November 27th, which is Black Friday, and December 24th, either the half or whole day. I think we've always done Black Friday, right? Yep. Yeah. So that one for sure. And then whether we want to give half or whole days on the other two or something different. What was the date on April? April 10th. April would be the 10th. Yeah. Good Friday the 10th. How much of a nightmare is it if you give a bonus day and you let people choose? Because I just noticed that both New Year's Day and Christmas are Fridays. If somebody wanted to take, is that a nightmare for paperwork to say choose your bonus day? It is. Okay. And I'm also going to suggest a proposal for the handbook when it comes to our to bonus days. Do you okay. want to hear that now too? Sure. Sure. Okay. So, I didn't realize the copy machine did different colors, so I apologize. I had to highlight. 
Sorry, Kathy. I can send you my copy. Yeah, I did email you. So my suggestion is, is to remove the bonus holidays. Um, right now, that's part of our issue when it comes to trying to get payroll done is the wording bonus holiday. So what I'm proposing is to remove the bonus holiday and just put them as additional paid holidays and treat them just like holidays instead of bonus holidays. Because right now, um, the lines that I have crossed off here, so if we go to the paragraph where it says each January, um, for bonus holidays, the 8 to 5 employees get just the 8 hours holiday, but the 24-7 staff gets the 8 hours holiday plus the 8 or 10 hours added to their vacation time. And right now in here it says that they can't be compensated, those hours for bonus holidays can't be compensated as overtime, but there's no way that we can decipher if they're using those hours for overtime or if they're using them for vacation time in regular payoff. Because uh, pay day off. Because right now, the vacation and the sick leave for the 24-7 staff counts towards overtime. <coughs> and it doesn't for the 8-5 to five staff. And so that was kind of one of my other proposals in here is to remove that wording. Vacation and sick count towards, but paid holidays do not. Well, they're not supposed to, but we, we don't, we, there's no way to decipher whether it was the 8 or 10 hours that they got for that bonus holiday. Right towards their vacation, or if it was their vacation time that they earned. But, but when you're changing it, so it would fix that the paid holidays would no longer be counted towards the, or be used for, or does it not even fix that issue here? Well, it would fix it. It's just kind of it's a trickling effect. So we go from a bonus holiday, and then it trickles down continuously to other areas of the handbook. So removing the bonus holiday would be, be a tremendous help but then you kind of have to adjust the holiday pay, how the holiday pay works also, and then go down to your overtime and adjust that one also. Sure. So this is this is just what I put together. This is what I propose if we want to go back and adjust it even more. I'm, I'm game for it. I just know that with the cutting of budgets this year that a lot of funds are going to overtime. It's a generous exception, but it creates a lot more problems. Yeah. And if you just reclassify it as a standard holiday, designate what it is because it's not necessarily a legal holiday, but it's an optional one. Correct. Correct. And if, if we, <coughs> right now the holidays, <coughs> holiday pay for a regular part-time employee with a set schedule, part-time employee and a temporary seasonal employee shall receive the full benefit of a holiday if it falls on a regular scheduled day. If the holiday falls on a non-scheduled work day, or an employee does not have a set schedule, the employee will receive no holiday pay. So that's that's another topic that we're running into is some are getting additional eight hours, some aren't getting those eight hours holiday pay. So that's kind of why on the second page I put the non-essential employees versus the essential employees. And so for your non-essential employees, the full-time employees, <coughs> the full benefit would be the eight hours. The part-time employees would receive the benefit of four hours. For your, with your essential employees, your full-time employees, for the holiday that they work, they would receive one and a half times, so time and a half, and then up to eight hours of regular holiday pay, and that would be a regular pay. So say if they work eight hours, they get eight hours of regular holiday pay plus their holiday, working that holiday, they get time and a half for that. Or if they work 10 hours, they get 10 hours for working, if they have a 10 hour shift, they get 10 hours a time and a half, but then they also get eight hours of regular holiday pay. And for an example, um, the part-time employees, if they work four hours of holiday, they get time and a half for that four hours, but then they get four hours of holiday at regular pay. <coughs> so right now, it's, some of them are, and it, it's just can And the accumulation <laughs> of vacation is, yeah. is the same too. Is what you're saying. Well, in vacation, they wouldn't get that vacation time added in anymore. Everything is just going to be paid at that which time. Which they are now, which technically they probably shouldn't be accruing in the first place. Correct. As a result of that, right? So right now they're they're accruing, plus they're getting, say, eight hours of pay added to, or eight hours of vacation pay added to their vacation time, plus they're getting their time and a half for working that holiday. 
they're just getting mm -hmm. when adding it into that vacation time is where it can become confusing when it comes to payroll. Well, I think this goes a little ways in fixing a bigger problem that we have with the whole policy, but I don't know that we should do it today. Should we put on the agenda for next week? So yeah, that's fine. I think we've gotten criticized before from the employees not knowing it's coming. That well, would be maybe our let's do that. That's fine with me. Do we want to add Easter Monday onto that? Should that not be in there? As listed? As, as of right now, we have not done that on Monday. Okay. Yeah. It just says that the holiday falls on a Sunday that's observed on the following Monday. Easter is always a Sunday. Yeah, and I don't right. think they've ever observed Okay, I just didn't know. I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. So <coughs> then um, we'll take this up and it can be effective this year even if we pass the next week, right? Or is that correct? We can yeah, pass it. Yeah, New Year's Day is a legal holiday. Correct? Okay, yeah. 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 So, so that, okay. that would be <coughs> So backdating everything the first. Okay. So the next holiday is what? The it would be the 20th, I believe. 20th. <coughs> so are you proposing to wait on setting the bonus days? I think we can still do those today, right. can't we? Do you want to wait? Well, are we going to call? That's the thing. They're not going to be bonus call? days anymore. That's just for lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. Additional, additional holiday. paid holidays. Yeah. So, so differentiate that between like New Year's Day and Native American Day and Veterans Day. And we call it a county approved holiday. Is that wording appropriate? That way we kind of know that it was a county approved holiday. Is that terminology fit? Or, or we could do administrative holiday. Um, it's just that I want the terms to mean the same. So if it's an administrative holiday, administrative given holiday, and a holiday, I want I want the terms to mean the same, the same thing. Right. Yes. The same. Yes. That's kind of what I was getting at. There. Yes, was and wording. that's fine with me too. Yes. Or additional paid holiday is fine too. Yeah. So last year we gave two. This year we could give one, two, or three. What's the commission's wishes? <coughs> I'll move the two half day options plus Black Friday. Second. Okay. And treat them as holiday. Okay. holidays. We got a motion from Lee, second from Sutton to go ahead and take our HR director's recommendation. See that. With well, the two half days and one full day. Any discussion? And then we'll take the rest of the up next week. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Thank you. You're <coughs> All right. We have the assessor's office closing policy. No changes this year. It's something that you have to adopt the annual. Move it. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any questions on that policy? All in favor say aye. Aye. Those nay. Motion carried. We have an ESRI quote for 2020 on JS and the visit the slow for expected situation. Move it. Motion from Sutton. Second. Second from Lee. I think it's 15. All in favor say aye. Aye. Those nay. Motion carried. Share of uniform allowance. So uh, moved. We got a motion from Bikert. Second. Second from Sutton. Questions on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Inmate transport fee. Move it. Second. We've got a motion um, from Feldheim, second from Weiss, and that was going 125 to 200. Yep. Okay. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Designation of official newspapers. We have American News, Groton Independent, and Dakota Press and Groton. Statute says we have to name all three, right? If we have three registered papers, we gotta have three. Move it. Second. Move from Feldheim, second from Spikert. Any questions on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Depositories. Nothing has changed here from last year. Move. Second. Move from Lee, second from Spikert. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Designation of deputies. Um, for a treasurer and registered deeds, everything is the same. For my office, we just clarified the fact that we currently have two chiefs, um, two regular deputies, and then I removed the part-time option. Moved. Moved from Sutton. Second. Second from Feldheim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Investment policy, there's no changes. Move. Second. Moved from Sutton. Second from Bikert. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Interest policy, no changes. So move. Second. Move from Bikert, second from Feldheim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Expense policy for travel. No changes from our previous motion when the rates went up at the state. We matched them. What are we at again? 40. 
that 42, isn't there, or 47? Let's see, mileage out. We are currently for in-state travel at $40 a day, out-of-state travel 56 That matches state reimbursement rates. And then for mileage, we are at the $0.47 cents per mile reimbursement. The 40 per meal? 40 per meal in-state, yeah. Move yeah. it. Second. Second. Motion from Felda and second from Weiss. Questions on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Expense policy for election officials. No changes this year. Move. Move from Sutton. Second. Second from Weiss. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have our tax seed notices resolution. This um, allows the state's attorney to process. Move. Second. Second from Weiss. Second from Fikert. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. Communication council appointments. It's been the chair and vice chair. Move. Second. Move from Sutton. Second from Weiss. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We have our FSA representative. Currently, it's been a spiker. Would you like to continue? Or? Move. Second. Move from Sutton. Second from Lee. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. This county rental rate and fee schedule. Um, legislative audits wanted us to have an actual fee schedule, so I've compi compiled them all together into one document. Uh, it's kind of a work in progress right now. Um, nothing has really changed in our fee schedule except the deposit on the youth camp that went from 100 to 150. That was with uh, per Kurt's recommendation. So move. Second. Moved by Biker, second by Weiss. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Volunteers for work comp purposes. This is like a third IT fair. Move. Second. Move from Weiss, second from Sutton. Questions on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carries. <coughs> we'll go through our board book and commission committee assignments. I don't know if you guys have your board books or not. You want to just turn those in and just go all electronic? We will. I think that's just way easier. As long as somebody's in charge of keeping it up to date, I think that's the route to go. Okay, great. Okay, I have a question. <coughs> As it relates to that, mm -hmm. is our ability to be able to access that when we're not here? Yeah, I'll actually email it to you guys so you'll have the board vote. I mean, we have the capability of doing that securely, but currently we don't have that option. And I would like to have that change. Okay. Well, there are can always put credit out of it. Yeah, if you want us to print you an actual copy. We but, but I think we've seen in real time that the changes be made so that once you email it, in six months, if there's anything that changes in it or people that change come off or not. Yeah, every term. time we have a motion, we'll just email a new one. That works. Okay, but I'd like to be able to pull it up on the server, which we can only do currently, even though we have the capability of doing it, for instance, yeah. when you're logged in at home mm -hmm. in the evening. Yeah. So there's a secure way of doing it. We simply aren't exercising that option, and I'd like that approved so we can do that. Yeah, I would like that too, being able to ask the shared drive remotely. So if you can communicate with IT to do that, sure. I appreciate it. Thank do you. we need an actual motion or just I think just have the chair direct IT to matter of sure. policy, right. <coughs> Could be in that yep. Thank, thank you. you. Can I have access to Yeah, thank you for doing it. Rock, you in, you want it in the <laughs> Any more takers? Okay, I'll Thank you. Yep. All right. So the first topic I guess we'll talk about that Edwards Preserve. There's a committee that is going to be set up with a uh, representative from Edwards family, representative from Brown County Commission, representative designated by the district, and one extra official non-voting representative from the association. Do we want to designate that this year or hold off till it's more set up? I think you can wait yet unless somebody wants to jump on that. No one has a problem with it. I would, wouldn't would mind being on it. I already contacted the Sanitary Sewer District of Richmond and the Homeowners Association asking them to name a representative and Mr. Edwards designated theirs last week, okay. you know, indicated who that was. So I think the sooner we get the ball going that way, the, the board is put in place and they can elect their officers and be prepared for whatever the next step may be. Well, how about once we have <coughs> the list of the four members, we'll add it to our board book and then just kind of make the motion for adopting the entire board. 
Let me sure. I'm just gonna, I guess, go through this book. I've tabbed out the ones that um, will need a motion. We have our 13 members. Um, it's the same as for the workshop, so we'll count that. For the Citizens Corp, in tab C, page 4, we have four members expiring December 31, 2018, and Mike's recommended just reappointing them all for a new three-year term. Move. Second. Motion Question on that. The, the CERT board, right? Uh, Citizens Corp. Corp. Oh, I'm sorry. Motion from Lee, second from Bikert on Another approval update. of the Citizen Corps Council. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. Do you want to go back to search Sutton? I just saw Gary Better's name on it. I'm not sure. No. Oh, yeah. I've got a, this you one is a whole list that's in your book. Yep. So and we'll I, make, I the, have the updated in my office. Okay. In the packet, I saw it on there, too. So. <laughs> Here you have it circled. I circled that. Oh, you circled. Oh. Okay. Just oh yeah, because I noticed yeah. it was on there. Sounds good. Okay. <coughs> we can go to page five. Um, top of it says Commission 2019. On there, what we'll update is just the chair and vice chair. Everything else should stay the same. We go to the next page, page six, commission committee appointments. Under Dennis Spiker, his Northeastern Mental Health Board was expiring and he agreed to sit for another five years. And for under Dwayne, the 4-H liaison, it says alternate, Gary Vetter. Would you guys like a new alternate? I'll be, a, I'll be alternate, nobody cares. Got a couple kids in 4-H. Sounds good. We'll throw one out there if anybody's interested. We only made about half of the meetings to the senior citizens board. Actually, I don't even see it on here. Senior citizens. Oh, we got it under Mike. Expired. No, it expired last year. Okay. They meet on Fridays. That's why you didn't get there. It's on the bike. <laughs> 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 they covered your bike. They meet at 9:30 on um, Fridays. Would that work for you? Would anybody else? I mean, I can keep going. I just wanted the commission to be where I only make about half the meeting. Friday mornings are a little tough. If you're willing to go, I think you can take that. That'd be great. So moving senior citizens <coughs> to Kipley. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that term expired 12-31-19. I haven't heard back from senior citizens board. Do you know is that renewing and what the term is? I went to the last meeting and there shouldn't be any changes. I think we just designate. They don't pick from us. We just have to designate it. Do you know how long the term is? I can check on that. You can verify with them and just go ahead and set it up. I want to say three years. And who is in charge of that board? Um, Jackie Whitlock. You can take the landline number off my name. I haven't had that for 10 years. And you can take mine off, too. Is yours, what's your landline like, the 226? Yeah. Okay. Dwayne, what's yours, the 229? 229, yep. Take mine off, 229. Did you get rid of yours, too? Yep. I'm the only one left with a landline. I've got them. So I've got you got one? one? Never, okay. Yeah. Uh, I got Put your number there. <laughs> when you got cattle, it's <laughs> tough to get rid of the landline. Yeah, I got tired of telling Mark as well. <laughs> Looks good. Okay. Anybody else need changes on their committee appointments? I'm okay with mine. Should we move to adapt these appointments? I'll Please. move the second. Motion from Sutton, second from Weiss. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. The next page is your depositories. Um, this is actually out, or the uncollateralized banks. This is actually out on Legislative Lodge's website. That's where we pull it from. So this will be included in the new board book. Well, it's in mine, I guess. Did you say the depositories? The uncollateralized banks, I'm sorry. Oh. Okay. And we actually don't have any in Brown County right now. I pulled the new report, so. Now we will go to the D's. 
for Dakota Prairie Museum Board, D, page 7, the first one in section D. Like we've got one, two, three that yeah. expired. And what we have here is Shannon, Embry O'Keefe, and Lee Shinkle will start their second year term. And then um, Wes Elliott is expired off the board. And Patricia said just leave that spot vacant for now until they find somebody. Okay. They don't need it for the quorum, so. Move. Move by Weed. Second by Feldman. All in favor say aye. 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 Close nay. Motion carries. We have the dive team. It is page eight, the last item in section D. And with the dive team, we're just going to add Michael Dunbar. Oh, second. Moved by we, seconded by Sutton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Motion carried. Michael Dunbar. Is he from Groton? I'm not sure. I guess I'm not sure. On report age, we'll update from Gary to Rachel. So our next one will be the fair board. I don't know if you saw that email from Gary with the updated um, board. We'll get back what the current board is. Oh. Second. We have seconded by Sutton. All yeah. in favor of Got a question. Yeah. Is, is it, are, they, are the members still now? I mean, do they have a full board or are they still Way behind. I think they're allowed up to 24. I think they're they're less than 24. They don't have a full board yet. They've gotten some more than what they had, but I don't think it's full yet. I don't yet. think we're still at full. Always capacity. looking for good members. All right, we got a motion and a second. All in favor of approving that fair board, say aye. 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 Close nay. Motion carries. Like our next one will be under H, H um, page 13, the Housing and Redevelopment Commission. And on that one, Colin Callum is off and is replaced with Paula Langtu. And that's, I called Jody Zuger at Every Housing Authority to get that information. You moved on these books, right? Moved by Sutton. Second. Second by Feldheim. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. Well, I will not be updating your application. Mm -hmm. I'm not using it anymore. It will be online. We'll no. have an electronic book. Okay. Um, and you, you'll get that in email. And then the next board, go towards the back. There's a page in here that has the City of Everything Board and Commission. I'll get that updated. Under what tab? Um, this is a bunch. I just have R. Okay. And just letting you know that that's not current. I'll get that updated. So if we go to tab W, there is the weed and pest board. And so it sounds like Dennis Weedabush is term is expired, but he will do a new three-year term. And um, Tyler Beerman will be starting his three-year term January 1. Moved. Moved by Weed. Second. Second by Sutton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed uh, nay. Motion carries. One. Mark was good on that too. He really was. <coughs> well, that's what we have for changes this year in the board book. So everything else that we didn't cover is just the same. It's, it's all current. Okay, no one's expired out, so. Anyone else have questions going through their board book? Anything All the members on the planning and rolling are the same, huh? Yeah, we don't have one come up here, so. Okay. End of 2020, I believe. Yeah, yeah. your bullet points. Anything else come up late notice?
Anything else from the commissioner? Do you need anything exact for HR? I was going to talk about the snow day that we had last week. Sure. Two weeks. Um, yeah, two weeks ago, <laughs> whatever that was. Okay, so I'll pass this one out also. This is currently what we have in the handbook. What was sent out on March of 2019 and then what I proposed. We have one more. Oh, I'll give you my. It's like something we change about every year. Or every three months. <laughs> so, sorry. Oh, you're fine. Sorry. She's the queen of it all. <laughs> so I wasn't sure how you wanted to handle this past snow day. If we wanted to just go with how we had it in the handbook, or how it was emailed out at the beginning of last year. The new proposed. <coughs> <coughs> That last paragraph under the proposed, Erica. Mm -hmm. Compensatory time or allow the employee to make up the time. Isn't that the same thing? Is yes. it comp time? I mean, <coughs> are we saying the same thing twice? Pretty much, yes. Yeah. And that would be at the discretion of the department head how they want their employees to handle that. So if, um, say Kathy has an employee who needs to leave early because they live out of town and want to get home before the weather comes in. They would either have the option to make up that time if she allows it or take vacation or leave without pay. And I think I had PTO in there, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did PTO. I really change that? Is there a time frame for the comp time? Like, does it have to be within the say payroll, say week? Can they hold it six months? See, I would like it preferably done within that same week because then it isn't rolled over and then it doesn't become a liability for the county where if we were to let people build up that time and say oh I have eight hours and now I can take my day of vacation or whatever it is mm -hmm. so that and if they were to leave then we have to pay them for that time. No, I, I like that. So I it's like that in yeah I, I pr prefer within a week or within a pay period which is the two-week period. Now would department heads have discretion to let their employee come in on a Saturday or stay till 8 p.m. I mean, how how far are we going to? To me, it? that would be that would be up to the department heads. If you trust your employees to come in on the weekend, clock in when they get here, clock out when they leave. Do so you know that they were here? How does that would be up to the commission too? I would say on how they feel about it. I would think if the department head is confident that they can make up the time and it's time well used, then uh, that would be the point, depending on the circumstances. I just want to make sure we're all understanding how right. this could play other than maybe admin staff here on a Saturday or staying late at night. Mm -hmm. But I think you might want to clarify because if it's the last day of a pay period current over the next pay period. Yeah. Because yeah, that throws a kink into it too if it's the last day of that pay period. And then they can't make it up to right that. Yeah. 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 I would think if you put in the, the next pay period you haven't made up, you know, you're allowed for that last day. That eliminates carrying out for five months if you just say made up within a two week period. Right. The okay. next following pay period, I would think if you put that in that would give them a little flexibility and they'd have the time to current or next. Yeah. Okay. And I can adjust that. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner <coughs> Sutton's point, you might want to just put the compensatory time in brackets and then allow the okay. employee to make up the time. So if so if we do go with proposed, we are going from on a day that's closed by the county paying employees for half a day to paying them for the full day. Correct. That would be the proposal. So when I when I put this <coughs> together, I was looking at other counties 
other cities and the state's policy. Mm -hmm. I wasn't just saying, oh, let's just do it this way. I was comparing to how other counties and cities and state, the state operate. Does everybody else do a full day like this? Or the state does a full day. Um, the city doesn't close at all. Um, if you go to Minnehaha County, they do a full day. If you go to Pennington County, they, by reading theirs, it was a little confusing, but it doesn't look like they pretty much close at all. They make their employees that they need to be gone take vacation. In Mead County, it's the same way. Mead County um, makes the employees if they need to be gone. So it sounds like if they close, then they close, and then the employees all have to take vacation. So it's all over the board. Mm -hmm. On a typical payroll, when we're fully staffed, what does that mean? What's that one half day for everybody? Just ballpark. A half a day for everybody? Mm -hmm. That I don't know. Okay. Because either you were going to pay the employee to be here, either way. Yeah. It's budgeted for. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. It's budgeted for. Sure. Yeah. And most employees would take vacation. Yeah. So you can take yeah. cash wise if, if you have it. Yeah. Any thoughts, commissioners? So if we go with the proposed both in arrears for the current, that would actually be extending a greater benefit to our employees. Correct. And then not only doing that, but then making either part of the motion or companion motion, making that policy going forward. Correct. Yep. And I will bring, if that's how you want to do it, is do it a proposed way this. Next week I'll bring back the adjustments that you guys recommended for the handbook. Because that's part of the issue we have looking back here is that we get policy that's recorded, we have policy that's sent out but not adopted, mm -hmm. and so forth. So with the changes we discussed, I would move that we do that retroactive, the proposed for the for the uh, snow day that we declared and that you bring the same policy for official adoption going forward. Next week. For the handbook, yes, and I will, yep, I'll make those adjustments and bring that for official adoption for the handbook next week. And then is there a way for the employees to know so they're not that we are looking at changes in case anybody has any input. Mm -hmm. so I remember Chris White just saying at the state attorney's office they want to know before we pass stuff and put it on the agenda. Okay. Make sure people know mm -hmm. what these proposed changes yep. are. And I can make sure I'm on the agenda for next week for handbook changes. Okay. Yep. Well, you, you get to go back and retroactively fix this. But. So <laughs> my dear motion is to skip what it used to be and put proposed in Use that for policy for that last snow day. In anticipation of making a policy going forward. And I'll second that. Okay, motion from Wayne, second from Sutton, discussion. Uh, the uh, caption in the first column, the chairperson, uh, of Brown County which will have the authority to close the offices. Mm -hmm. uh, I normally went under the advisement of the sheriff's office and the emergency management. Okay. That's how I kind of made my decision when I called them in the morning. We were up early and talked. I wonder if you probably shouldn't add that so people realize that you're not the only one making that decision. You've got mm -hmm. other people involved. I think it would just clarify that, you know, you're not out there on a limb just making that decision openly. You're actually checking with your emergency management and the sheriff's office. Yeah, it could read something to the effect of the, the chairman in, in consultation uh, in, with in conference with or something with the sheriff's office and and uh, highway superintendent authorizes the in other words they don't really authorize it but it can occur with them the chairman does to, to close. Yeah, it could help with normally you can find out in the sheriff's office how many people are stuck and what the car situation is. Emergency management can tell you how many rescues they had during the night. That kind of helps you out in your decision when you make that as a chairperson. And do we want it to put a time in there um, that we will notify as a... That's all the stuff. But okay. you know, you almost have to, in my experience isn't it, I had two half days and one full day, I believe I closed in the two years. Mm -hmm. uh, it creates a lot of confusion if you can't get it out before 7 o'clock the morning you're going to close. People just, phone rings off the hook, nobody knows what they're supposed <coughs> to do. It's, it's, it's a tough call because, you know, the weather can change from 10 o'clock at night till mm -hmm. yeah. 6 in the morning, okay. but how do you make that call? But I found out that the more advance you can give them, the quieter it is mm -hmm. when you make that decision. That's what I was going to say. If we could put, like, this will be made by 6.30 in the morning. This decision would be made by 6.30 in the morning. Uh, or where we to get the information? I don't think we want to get that precise. Okay. Okay. Because these yeah. situations will be different and something... 
I mean, something could prevent us yeah. from doing that, and then that would. We should clarify where the department head would look to get the information. And that was where I was going yeah, next. Email, phone, <clears throat> how's it going to be? Um, I sat down with Scott Mike this last week, and he does have that texting option out there. And so in discussion with him, versus it was, it was department heads versus all the employees. We thought if we just took the department heads, sent a mass text out to the department heads saying, the county offices are going to be closed on such and such a day, please notify your employees. Department heads would create a phone tree. So Kathy would contact her two chief deputies, her chief chief, two chief deputies would contact the next employee. Could we just have all employees on the heads? That's where it could become, that's where it becomes a little iffy because it's adding and removing those employees and make sure we have, a, make sure we have that updated list. Where we know the department heads are always updated, we know we always have the correct list for them. And then it's, do you include all the 24-7 staff? Don't you include the 24-7 staff? So this way if we sent it out to all the department heads, the department heads then would in turn know who to, <coughs> know who to notify. So Mark and Dave obviously aren't going to notify all their employees, but Kathy, you're going to notify all your employees. So that's... I think the department is a good place mm -hmm. to start. And I like that Mike put it on Facebook, on mm -hmm. emergency management page. <coughs> yeah, that and nice. that's where I first saw it, actually. And yeah. it sounds like Paul put it on the website, and then I saw it also on Aberdeen American News. So, yeah, the, it, it, um, the more we can get it out there, the better. But I think just even a text to the department that's just saying, we're going to be closed, notify your employees. And you can always just take that text and shoot it on to your employees. Yeah, yeah no, I like that idea. Too. Yeah. But rather than have them try and manage all the changes in personnel in each department. Yes. Whoever's responsible for that. You're department. managing roughly 20 people versus 200 people. Yep. Further question? Yep. In the proposed, now that I look at it a little closer here, so it says paid for the day. Um, do we want to have something in it that allows for half days? I'm not so sure that allows us to do that, for instance if the weather turns nasty rather unexpectedly and the chairperson decides at 10 o'clock we're going to call a half day starting in okay. June. And I could, yeah, I can rewrite that too. Based on what the, the square Half day or a full day. Right. So for your motion, Commissioner Weiss, it's essentially to authorize full day pay for our December 30th snow day. Period, with the expectation this will be brought next week for policy change. Yeah, yeah. Correct. And then we'll actually adopt the policy yeah. ne next week. Okay. So if somebody had already taken that day off, they don't get the time back. Usually they do. So it would be like if you, when we designated our bonus days, if they already had put in vacation for that day next year, then they would get that vacation back and then they would get to use it as a bonus or a holiday. We're everybody, everybody, we're generous. Gets, everybody gets the same benefit. Well, that's why the chair doesn't do it lightly, and I think it was more than appropriate this time for that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Adam, I have a question for you. If mm -hmm. people call in to your radio station for the clothesline, line, mm -hmm. uh, how, how much success do they have, like, at 536 o'clock in the morning? I'm there every morning at 530, but uh, I would uh, just email news at dakotabroadcasting.com, uh, and that will that will get to me, like, quick, I guess. So, or you can, or you can just, uh, I can give you my cell and you can just, like, let me know. I always have that on me, so. And I guess that's what I was thinking, that, you know, if we got a way to get out to the media, mm -hmm. uh, just another branch to let people know that, you know, mm -hmm. at 6 o'clock, you know, they can turn the radio on and they might hear it there, too, you know, just another option to make sure that people are, paying attention. I mean, I mean, how many people get up in the morning and don't put a radio on? I think most everybody does. I mean, or they're driving. You know, they go start the car and they find out, oh, I started the car, I don't have to go to work. You know, I mean, at least you'd have some other option where people would pick it up at. Okay. And, and I don't know how successful we are doing that right now. I have no idea, but... Doug, with the next generation coming in, the first thing they pick up in the morning is their phone. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I'm in my car. Yeah, but we have an older population. We're from County I know, County. I know, I know. <laughs> and uh, we, can, we can talk about this uh, uh, later if you want, but you can actually, uh, with our event delay, we can create a, just an account for Brown County, and you guys just have the username and password, and you can go in 
and okay. announce this, this and you know fill out the announcement that you're closed at the account because the courthouse is closed. And then when I would be when I would get there at five thirty or whoever sees it first can just approve it and then it goes right to the website too. So uh, cool we tried hiring. to get, we tried to get that the schools to we created accounts for all of them to do that, but they I mean no way go figure they just email instead. They don't want to have to go in, log in, and do everything like that when we can do it. But if you wanted to do it yourself, you could do that, and then we would approve it once we would see okay. it. So there's other options with getting into the media. Mm -hmm. I think we just need to look at some of those two. Okay. We have got a motion and a second on the floor from Weiss and Sutton. Was there any other questions on what we're doing here? So the intention is to go back on the prior snow day and we're going to pay them the full day instead of the half day that we would have, and then you'll bring the proposal next week and we'll take up the two proposals. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carried. Anything else for us, Erica? Lay it on us. <laughs> um, step increases. Right now we currently do them throughout the year. Do we want to move them to doing them all at the beginning of the year? <coughs> I think we talked last week about making it effective February 1st, I think this year. Okay. And then once it's active, then go make it effective January 1st next year or at the reorg meeting or whatever we do. So mm -hmm. that was one thing I think we discussed last week as yeah. an option. I don't know what the ramifications are for the budget of when we do it, but I do agree that we should do them all together. I don't think it would be significant. Mm -hmm. Like when I did my budget, I budgeted them for the entire year, starting in January, because that wasn't going to calculate out it. every single month. Yeah. I think a lot of time I had to do that. Yeah. So, so if you did it mid-year, would you balance that out a little bit more between employees that started in January and employees that started in December? You know, you'd, you'd have a middle line there where you wouldn't have that big spread if you did it mid-year. You know, and I don't know what the ramifications would be, but I was just thinking, you know, you're going to have some of them that are going to be shorter, and you're going to have some that are going to be longer. And I'm wondering if you picked a midterm type thing with that. It's less a worth the fees because then <coughs> going forward, do we move it to that January time frame, or do we keep it mid-year? Mm -hmm. That would well, be. I think the key is to get everybody on the same time, yeah. which is the big time saver for everything. I mean, whether it's January 1st or mid-year. I don't think that's a that's a factor. I think the factor is is all this penciling and figuring all the time is the big thing. Or if you had a just one specific time, it would just save a bunch of time for the HR department and Sundial and all those other things that go on. No matter when it started, it'll impact someone differently the first time. After that, it'll put your the same. Yeah. Get a little less pushback. You do it first year that way. Nobody right. loses it. Exactly. I would make a motion that we switch to that policy. Okay. February first this year. Can we do it next week so this is on the agenda? Yep. Oh, and then, oh yeah, sure, sure. Yep. And then I can. Sure. If there's anything that needs to be changed in the handbook, Perfect. I can get that adjusted also. Yep. Yep. Okay. Okay. What else? Um, no. The other stuff. Can we just wait for an agenda appointment? Yep. The other stuff I had is exec. Well, we're not going to oh. take action on any of this. Okay, you need an exec? Yeah, and then the rest of the stuff I'll just get on next week okay. and I'll just put in their handbook changes. Good. Yep. Uh, exec for personnel? Personnel. Move. Sorry. Second. 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 Done. All right, we're back from exec. No action. Anything else to come before the commission? Move to adjourn. Motion from Sutton. Second. Second from Wee. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. We'll be adjourned until next week.